All right, kiddos, we're back. We're continuing to talk about measuring and calculating. Today we're going to talk about something called significant figures. Let me introduce it just by writing down three measurements and telling you how different they are from one another. However, you might think that they're the same. For instance, let's say I said that something had a length of three centimeters and then I measured it a second time and I got 3.0 centimeters and the third time 3.00 centimeters. Some might think that those three measurements are the exact same measurement. In reality, to a scientist, they are not. This measurement here has what we call one significant figure. We know the length of the object to one digit, three centimeters. It could very well be 2.8, 2.9, 3.1, 3.2 centimeters. We're not sure. We know it to one digit. So we say that this measurement here has one significant figure. We abbreviate significant figure SF. Now, in contrast to that, this second measurement, where we have 3.0 centimeters, don't we know with more of a certainty that this measurement is closer to 3 than this one is. We know with more certainty that it is. See, we know that it's close to 3.0. Now, it could be 3.03. .03. It could be 2.97. We're not sure exactly, but we know now to two digits. So we say that this measurement here would have two significant figures. And then, of course, this third measurement, 3.00 centimeters. Now we know that digit for sure. We know that digit for sure. And this digit here is what we call our estimate. The last digit we write down is always our estimated digit. Not a guess, but an estimate. So we know this one for sure this one for sure, that number uh, could be 3.01, maybe it's 2.99, you know, we could be off in this last digit, but we would say this one we know to a greater degree of certainty than we do the other two. So we would say this has one, two, three, three significant figures. All right, let me try to explain that by giving a couple examples to you. Here's a paperclip, and let's say that this paperclip um, is placed right at the zero mark on the far left side, and the length of that paperclip we're trying to determine. So let's write down as many digits as we know for sure, and then write down one uncertain digit, one that we have to estimate on. So we know it's between five and six centimeters long, so can't I say five point something? Yeah, I think I can. And let's see how many tenths. 5.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and not 9. So it's between 5.8 and 5.9. So the next digit, 5.8, I know for sure. The last digit would be somewhere between 5.8 and 5.9. I'm going to have to estimate what that is. Now some of you might say 5.84. Others might say eh, 5.85. That's okay. It's an estimate. I'm going to go with 5.84 centimeters here. So I would say that this measurement with my particular measuring device here has one, two, three figures that are significant. I don't know for sure what comes after the eight. Anything after the four, by the way, would certainly be a guess. So the measuring device I'm using here allows me to know for sure to the nearest tenth, and I can estimate one digit, which is in the hundredths position. This illustration here uh, shows that this rod has um, a length of between five and six, so we know five centimeters is a known digit. And let's see, it's 5.15, it's between 5.2 and 5.3. So we know the point 0.2 is also a known digit. So, so far we have one, two significant digits. The third digit, the individual that read this, said, well, it's between 5.2 and 5.3. And he estimated that it's really, really close to 5.2. So he said 5.03. That's my estimated digit. And when we make measurements, we're allowed one estimated digit. So this measurement here would be 5.23 centimeters. And once again, it would have three significant figures. Okay? All right. 
Let's take a look at the next page here. Now I'm using two different rulers to measure the same length. So this dashed line represents the length I'm, missing, I'm measuring. This ruler on the bottom, kiddos, take a look and write down all the digits you know for sure and estimate one digit. Well, you can see the individual did that for you already. It's between 2 and 3, so they wrote down 2. And they really couldn't tell if it was, you know, 0.5 right on the nose. They're estimating that it's 0.5. So we have the known digit and the estimate digit. So by using this ruler, we can only have two significant figures. But the one above, if you notice now, has tenths marks between the 2 and the 3. So now we know the 2 for sure, and then if we count over the tenths, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we know that number for sure, and then we can estimate that spot right there. And the individual that measured that said, well, it's right between 2.5 and 2.6, so they called it 2.55. So using this ruler, we could have three significant figures. And if we had an even more accurate measure in measuring instrument, maybe each of these tenths were subdivided into tenths further, further, we could get additional significant figures from our measuring device. Now, we, don't, we, we can also measure volume. I mean, this we've measured length, but when we use something called a graduated cylinder, we can measure the volume of a liquid. And we can estimate a digit when we do that as well. When we read a graduated cylinder, we read the bottom of the meniscus. The liquid sticks to the side of the cylinder. So we could read up here, or we could read down here at the bottom. What we do is we always read the bottom of the meniscus, and we keep that consistent with all of our measurements. We always read the bottom of that curve. So take a second and write down all the digits you think you know, and then estimate one, and then tell me how many significant digits are in the measurement. I'll give you a second to do that. So pause the video and do it now. All right, welcome back. Let's see what you guys did. We know it's between 40 and 50 mils, so you started with a 4, didn't you? And each of these little marks here are 1 milliliter, so 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, and so on. It looks like the volume, if we measure the bottom of the meniscus, is between 44 and 45. So I'll put down another 4. I know it's 44. Point. Now we have to estimate a digit. I think that's a little bit more than halfway between 44 and 45. So I'm going to call that 44.6 milliliters. And I can't estimate any more than one digit. So I wrote down all that I know and one estimated digit. So I would say that this measurement had three significant figures. Did you get the same answer? I hope so. Now, there are a set of significant figure rules that we need to learn. And we're going to practice these on the next page of notes. Rule number one, non-zero numbers that are recorded are considered to be significant. So the number 72.3, all of those are non-zero digits, we would say it has one, two, three significant figures. And then rule number two we use quite often. We used it at the beginning of the lecture today. All final zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. So these two the 6 and the 2 are non-zero digits. We know from rule num that number 1 that they're significant. And this 0 is a final 0 to the right of the decimal. So we know that this is really, really close to 6.2. We've estimated that number right there, so it's significant. We estimated it as a 0, so that has three sig figs. Rule number three, any zero between significant digits is also significant. So that zero right there is significant because it's between a six and a five, which are non-zero digits. Now, rule number four, placeholder zeros are not significant. Placeholder zeros. To remove placeholder zeros, you can rewrite the number on scientific notation. And when you do that, Sometimes those zeros, you can get rid of them if they're placeholders. So, if I have 0 0.0253, can't I write this number as 2.53, remember scientific notation as we learned in the previous lecture, times 10 to the 1 to negative 2. I could write this number over again without those two zeros. So that must mean they're placeholders, and therefore they are not significant. So I would have one, two, three sig figs in that measurement. 
Let's take a look at this guy. 4,320. Can't I rewrite that in scientific form as 4.32 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3rd. Once again, when I rewrote it in scientific form, I did not need that last zero. It's a placeholder, so it's not considered to be significant. Okay? All right. Now, the last significant figure rule, um, I think, should be pretty obvious. When we count numbers, counting numbers and defined constants have an infinite number of sig figs. So if I were to say there are six molecules of something, I've actually counted them. One, two, three, four, five, six. This has infinity sig figs. Definitions also have infinite number of sig, an infinite number of sig figs. So if I were to define a minute as 60 seconds, it's not 60.0002 seconds, is it? No, one minute is exactly 60 seconds. So definitions have an infinite number of sig figs. Let me give you another example. I'm going to write down this many marks here. Okay, there are four hash marks there. How certain I of that am I of that? Well, one, two, you can say, well, this one's a little longer, Mr. Hummer, so maybe it's four point a little more. No, 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 no. The number of hash marks, regardless of their size, is a counted number. So there are four hash marks here. It's a counted number. And remember, counted number have an infinite number of significant figures. What if I were to say um, there are one dozen eggs? Some students might say, well, Hummer, that has one significant figure here. You're estimating that. No, if I've counted 12 eggs, I know I have a dozen. There is one dozen, and so this would have an infinite number of sig figs. 12 eggs, e or excuse me, one dozen eggs equals 12 eggs. It's a definition, and has an infinite number of sig figs. All right, let's practice. We'll wrap this up by practicing a few problems. So the best way to learn this is by practicing. So here we go. I'm going to do A and B for you. Then you'll pause and do the rest of it, and we'll see if our answers match. Okay? How many significant figures, sig figs for short, are in the following measurements? 29.43. Well, those are all non-zero digits. There are four significant figures there. The 2, the 9, and the 4 I know for certain, and that 3 must have been my estimated digit. Letter B. 507.2. Well, these three are non-zero digits. This is a zero between significant digits. So remember that's significant. So this measurement also has four sig figs. Okay, now you do the rest in your notes. Pause the projector, excuse me. Do the rest in your notes and then come back and see if your answers match mine. Okay? All right, you're back. Can't I rewrite letter C in scientific form as 3.4 times 10 to the negative 3? See, these zeros at the beginning were not needed. They're placeholders. They're unnecessary, so they are not significant. So that measurement has two significant figures. Did you get that one right? Let's try letter D. 245,000. Can't I re re rewrite that as 2.45 times 10 to the fifth power? I did not need those zeros when I wrote it in scientific form. Just the 2, the 4, and the 5 were significant. So that would have three significant figures. Now letter E is a bit tricky. If you got letter E, you should pat yourself on the back. We know that these four or these three numbers are significant because they're non-zero digits. And then doesn't this number end with a zero to the right of the decimal? So that is significant. So I have four significant figures. If I were to rewrite this in scientific form, I would have to write 8.760 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So those leading zeros weren't important, but that last zero was. That last zero was my estimated digit. The number before it, I knew for sure. All right, so if you said four for letter E, 
Good job. Pat yourselves on the back. Letter F. What did you get? Let's see. Of course, these digits here, the 3, the 4, the 5, the 8, the 7, and the 6 are non-zero digits. They are significant. And doesn't the number end in zeros again to the right of the decimal? So they are both significant. So this guy would have eight significant figures. And finally, letter G. Did you put infinite? Yeah, why would you say an infinite number of sig figs? That's right, because you counted three eggs. You didn't measure them, you simply counted them. There's not 3.12 eggs. There are three eggs. It's a counted number. Counted numbers have an infinite number of significant figures. All right, let's try this last problem here, and then we'll call it good for the day. Let's round each of these values off to four sig figs. So, we're going to start from the left and count over four digits. One, two, three, four. So I want to round that there. Wouldn't I call that 84.79 kilograms? That would have four sig figs in it. This one here, I count over one, two, three, four. I'd round right there. I'd call that 38.45 grams. Okay, you do the other four or pause this, then do the other four, then come back and see if your answers match mine. All right, you're back. Letter C. One, two, three, four. I have to make a decision there on that five. I think I'm gonna call that 4.93, and since the number that next to that is bigger than five, I'm gonna round that up to six. So 4.936 meters. Letter D. If you got letter D right, you get it. These zeros are not significant. Don't count them. Remember, we could rewrite this in scientific form without those zeros, so they're not important. So we're going to start here. One, two, three, four. So we're going to say 0, 0.000. Those are not significant. Then our first one is a 5, 4, 8, 2 grams. Now, once again, we could write that as 5.482 times 10 to the negative four grams. And you can see there are only four significant figures there. Letter E, one, two, three, four. We have to make a decision there. Some of you are right, one, three, six, eight, and that's wrong. 1,368 is not the same as 136,758. <laughs> so let's call this 1,000, excuse me, 136,008 hundred kilograms. Let's see if that works. One, three, six, I have to round that off to an eight. Yeah, wouldn't that be equal to 1.368 times 10 to the fourth kilograms if I were to write that in, in scientific form? And you can see it has one, two, three, four sig figs. So letter E was a tricky one as well. And finally, letter F. One, two, three, four. We have to make a decision there. This is an easy one. I hope you all got this one. 2.015 milliliters. That has four significant figures. Okay? You know what? When you come to class tomorrow, we'll practice a few more of these and answer your questions. So please come with questions, and hopefully we'll get this straightened out in class next time. We'll do more practice on an assignment as well. All right. Thanks for your time. See you later. Bye-bye.